it's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber, and today I'm going to show you this fun spider web quilting design. I'm here today sewing on my Baby Lock Aria. Those who've been around a little while know that my Aria, her name is Sunday. I have a jubilant named Saturday because I only quilt on Saturdays and Sundays. So today we're going to be doing this fun motif, and I'm going to show you how to extend it into other areas as well. So let's get started. This is my Halloween hexi pillow, and you can see here along the edge, the spider webbing is actually thread. I quilted spider webbing on here, and I wanted to show you how to make this spider web quilting design. I just did it with a regular quilting weight thread here when I quilted it on my Halloween hexi pillow, but now I'm working on the showcase quilt, and so I went ahead and put, this is wonderful 12 weight in my machine and 12 weight is the thickest thread that you can get on a standard machine or that you can use on a standard machine one thing to note is that you can't use your needle threader you have to hand thread when you use 12 weight because the needle threader it's just too thick for that down in the bobbin i just have regular um quilting weight thread no big deal now I went ahead and tested because 12 weight is thicker and I did have to bump down my tension like four notches I think it ended up being and I practiced I did a little bit of stitching and I bumped down the tension some more um let's see how close we can get up, up on that was still getting some light there we go um that the threads were still pulling it was pulling the bobbin thread up and so I got it to the point where I could do some basic swirls while keeping the tension between the top and bottom thread even. So I did have to play with the tension a little bit because of the thicker thread and that's going to depend on your machine and all you want to do is just grab some extra scrap fabric with a little bit of batting in between the exact same weight that you're going to do on your quilt and just do a little practice. You also will want to quilt a little bit slower when you use the 12 weight just to be kind to the thread in your machine. So I'm going to go ahead and start by um, bringing up my bobbin thread. There we go. I'm pulling that out of the way. And I'm going to start my spider web here at this corner and I'm going to bring it out on this little triangle. And I only want my spider webs on my gray fabric. I think on my orange fabric, I'll probably end up doing some pebbling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide my stitching along the seam right here. Now, if you like to do ruler work, this would be a great spot to do ruler work. If you don't want to do ruler work, that's totally fine. I'm not. Spider webs aren't always perfectly straight, so I'm totally fine with there being a little bit of slack in my lines, that they're not perfectly ruler straight. They look a little more natural to me that way. Okay, I did four lines on this side. I think I'm just gonna do two on this side. Again, to make it look more natural and not quite as perfect. So now I have the base for my spider web, and I just need to put in the webbing. So I'm going to bring my needle up to a little further up, and then I'm just going to do these arc shapes. 
with the goal of kind of going up and then back down. It's a little hard to see on those smaller ones, but basically I'm going from here and then making an arc up and then bringing it back down. There we go. Now, if you want to make sure that you end on one side or the other of the web, then you just need to make sure you determine if you do an odd or even number of these. Not every single triangle in this quilt is going to have a web that looks exactly the same. Some of them I might even do from a different corner of the triangle. So this is pretty simple to do. Now I have this setting triangle over here that I'm going to work on and it's a lot bigger. So I could do like one giant spider web over the whole thing. Um, if, especially if I went from one corner out, but I want to have a lot of variety in my cobwebs. So I'm not going to quite do that. I will go ahead and start here and I'm going to bring some cobweb out and then I'm going to add some other cobwebbing across it. Now I've got myself kind of in a corner here as I'm making these lines and I don't have to only make my straight lines and then go in and make my curves. I want to hop on over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I brought myself back to this spot here and I have two choices. I can travel along the line that I already made and that's totally a fine choice, but I can also move out from this spot. Spider webs, again, not all perfectly symmetrical and perfect. So rather than travel along a line that I've already done, I'm just going to make a new line. Now I've got some gray over here that is not part of this cornerstone piecing, but it definitely is still part of the background. So here is another choice. Do you want all of your units to be their own unit or do you want to bring them all together and I definitely want to bring these all together. So there you go. I've really got this design started. I'm going to fill in some of these areas. I'll probably add a couple lines in here. If it starts to look a little too non spider rubby, you can add a couple more lines in. I might add a couple more in here. Um, but that's the basic idea. It's just lines and then arcs that connect the lines however you want. And you can get really free form and fun with this. 
If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. And make sure you subscribe to this channel. I have so much more quilting awesomeness coming your way. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.